Once a month, or more if you're lucky, Talking with Mar finds Tin Pod Radio's in-apartment librarian talking about books, movies, library programs, and everything else, including that carpet from the 80s. Yo, this is It's Mur, and you're listening to Tin Pod Radio. You can find me at It's Mur on Instagram and Patreon and Ko-fi. Please don't feel me because I know what I want. Please deliver me that song out of your soul. It makes you freeze time, staring in at yourself. It's time to step outside onto the path you once made. The both of them crawled out of bed to head to work with the radio playing in the background as a soundtrack to their asshole comments to each other. The radio was stuck on an early morning news talk radio show, but at least that nonsense doesn't send them into a full rage argument of what sort of songs are worth listening to. Just waking up next to each other causes enough problems. No use adding to it with who has the better taste in music. Both of them still had too much early morning in their bodies to pay attention to the breaking news report on the radio. Plus, it's hard for background noise to get your attention when you're throwing out fuck you and go to hell like two dueling machine guns. After a shower, she headed into the kitchen to grab some breakfast before leaving for a job as a nurse. He had stopped by the couch and turned on the TV, not having to head for his job as a fast food cook for a few more hours. He had time to just vegetate for a bit. Both stopped dead, barely breathing, as the news report was caught mid-broadcast. Still no word from the White House on the whereabouts of the President at this time. The Vice President was in Virginia at the time of the impact on Florida. The VP was in Virginia trying to calm communities shaken by the sudden disappearance of 2,000 family members, loved ones and neighbours there one month ago. Right now he is said to be in a safe location. Let's go to Monica King in Melbourne, Florida for the latest from the scene of the impact. Sabrina walked from the kitchen and stood beside Ken, who had risen to his feet, as a woman was shown on the newscast standing knee-deep in water from the location of what appeared to have at one time been some sort of super shopping centre. Monica, can you hear us? Any new information on the impact? The location reporter had a really frightened look on her face as she watched a blue vest float by in front of her, then a banjo, then a rubber chicken but she was able to compose herself and remember her job. Mark, this is like nothing anyone in this area has ever seen before, and those who live in Florida have seen their share of natural disasters. No one from the grocer down the street to scientists can explain why, after the object impacted into the waters off the coast of Melbourne, waves have continued to come one after the other, pounding the space coast. Monica, is there any word on whether anyone has any idea what the object was? Mark, military officials just about an hour and a half ago said they believe this was not any sort of attack by a missile or other enemy technology on American soil, nor do they think this is an act by any beyond human. And even though no radar machines detected the object approaching and entering or going through the Earth's atmosphere, they are saying as of right now that they believe it was space debris of some kind, most likely from a satellite or meteor. Sabrina sat down with her mouth open as she began to cry. Ken she sobbed. Julie's. Ken wrapped his arm around her and pulled her to him. This was the first time they'd actually touched each other in weeks that wasn't punches. I'm sure she's okay, Ken told her, but watching the story unfold on the news gave him pause to his own words. Julie held Lindsay's hand as another wave pounded against the outside of the factory building. 
the impact and water sent them sliding across the hard rooftop. The only thing that stopped them from going off the roof was hitting against the high ledge of the roof. Julie was on her hands and knees as the wave passed. She was trying to catch her breath. Lindsay had gotten to her feet and dropped water-soaked pants beside Julie. Put my pants on. I don't see yours anywhere. We've got to get off the roof before another one of those waves hits and throws us off this time. Julie looked up at Lindsay. She was crying. Lindsay could tell, though, from the pained look in her eyes. She could separate the tears flowing down the cheeks of the woman she loved from the salty seawater. Lindsay? Lindsay knelt down. She brushed one hand against Julie's cheek while she handed her the pants with the other. I don't know. Tsunami, maybe? Put those on, because we're jumping off the roof together. You